So our next talk will be about um, my personal favorite programming language, which is also Clojure. Um, and I'm very excited that Joy will give us, give us a great talk. So give a warm applause for our first talk about the first programming language today. Okay. Um, did so, did you change the settings for the BMO? No. No. It did work five minutes ago. There we go. So. Um, I want to give a short lightning talk about closure. Um, actually, my lightning talk said that I was going to talk about closure, which is a slight lie because I'm not going to be doing closure. I'm going to be doing closure script instead. But it looks exactly the same as closure. It just compiles down to JavaScript instead of closure. Instead of Java, it's in, it compiles down to Java script instead of Java. Um, so closure is a Lisp, which is a hosted language, runs on another language. Um, there's three that supported um, platforms, which is JavaScript, Java, and the CLR. And it's very pretty language. You've got lots of matching parentheses. Um, so you can look and see what something is. Uh, there's a lot of functions, particularly what I wanted to talk most about today is, is sequences. Um, and uh, there's a whole bunch of different um, cool functions that you can use in Clojure to, to um, mod like, I say modify when I mean um, take a sequence and create a new sequence, basically, because we are dealing with all immutable data. So for instance, there's a repeat function which returns a lazy sequence, um, and it has, um, it's okay, it's lazy, uh, it can be infinite, so if I create a lazy sequence of cookies, I get an infinite sequence of cookies. And then I can take as many cookies as I want, and they never, ever end. If I want a different kind of cookies, I can also create a sequence, an, an infinite lazy sequence, containing as many cookies as my heart desires. Um, and, but that's kind of boring, because then I have to decide which, which sequence I want to use, depending on which cookie I want. I don't want to do that. Um, so I can use interleave, which takes two lazy sequences and produces another lazy sequence in which these sequences are interleaved. And then I can have like a this or that kind of uh, choice. But I want to mix it up. This is so boring. Uh, so there's a function in Clojure which is called randnth, which returns a random element of the sequential collection. And so if I do this a whole bunch of times, I get some kind of random cookie. It's like really exciting. I'm always looking forward to seeing what kind of cookie I get. Then there's a function in Clojure which is called repeatedly. It takes a function of no arguments um, and returns an infinite sequence. Uh, so if I so that calls the function you give it as many many times and, and puts the results of the, the um, function in an in infinite sequence. Uh, infinite lazy sequence at the end. So if I want to create a random cookies generator, I can define the definition function for defining a function, uh, define a random cookies function that takes no arguments and calls my repeatedly function with, uh, with a generator that I give it using the, the hash is the notation enclosure for an inner function. Um, yeah, as you can see, what I also didn't say, because I totally didn't explain Clojure at all, I just started showing you guys stuff. Um, but in Clojure, the syntax of Clojure is just that the first, the thing of most importance, the thing that's being done always comes at the first part of the, um, of the parenthesis block, and then everything else comes after it. Um, I, say, I like to say that they're having a party in the parentheses, but I don't actually know what that means. 
Um, so if, what do I want to do if I want to take some functions, take some of the, uh, I have this infinite, long, li unlimited amount of cookies, and I want to take some of them. Uh, so I can take five random cookies, and then I get five cookies, and they change. So if I wanted to just, just take 20 and then define a sequence that I can use over and over, and I don't want it to change, I can save it in uh, variable cookies, um, and then the, that will, will not change. So def is not something you use to mutate variables, but def is an enclosure. If you want to just define something, you can use def, and then uh, if, it could be changed later, but if you're doing it correctly, you shouldn't do that. Um, but then I want to take both, the, I want to say both the cookies that I took and the cookies which are left um, in my unlimited cookie jar, which is my infinite sequence. Well, okay, this is actually only, a, uh, this only, this cookie jar only has 20 cookies in it, which is kind of sad. Um, and then I can take, I, I can do this, um, I can, this, this is a vector enclosure with the square brackets. So it, then the return type has two elements. One is a sequence with the two cookies that I took, and the other is this, um, with the ones that I dropped. So it's the, the splitting at the, at the middle. Because it's splitting in the middle, there's a function for that, which is a function that's split at. It takes a number and a collection and returns a vector um, with exactly what I just showed you. So now I can split, I can take five, and then I know what, what other cookies are left in the cookie jar. So let's define a function to take some cookies. So I'm defining my function, take some cookies with a number n and cookies, and then I'm going to split it, and then I'm going to say that I took those cookies. So it's the same exact thing. Um, but I don't really know what the vector that come out means. So if I'm looking at this as a, as a person, um, you have like, okay, there's two elements, but what does that mean? So if I, if I do this, I can do, this is some pattern matching in, the, in a let call. So the take cookies function now, um, I'll call my split at n cookies function. I don't know if that works. Yeah. Okay. N hasn't been defined yet. Anyway, um, uh, what this will do is this will def we'll call this function split at n cookies, and it will match the, uh, the, what came out of that with taken and left, and then it will bind it to those values in my scope. And then I can return, I, I can use those values that were created to return a map, um, which gives me a nice name for what I just did. So then, when I take cookies, I see the cookies that I took and the cookies that I left. So in enclosure, a map has the curly braces, and then you, uh, you can use keywords or whatever you want, actually as a key because it's a dynamic um, programming language. Keywords is just kind of like a name. It can also look itself up in a map. So for instance, here, if I wanted to do this, I could, I could do this. Um, if I want to take, see the taken ones from here, then I get this sequence. So I can retrieve from a map, this is a map in this case, then I can retrieve it using the, a, the, a keyword, which is also a function which knows how to look itself up in a map. But I just want to take, I don't want to only take cookies, I also want to bake some cookies. Um, so what is, how can I bake cookies, or how can I add cookies to a cookie jar that exists? There's a function in Clojure called LazyCat, which, um, append, so it, append, it, it can append or it can concatenate um, lazy sequences, which is important because you don't want to necessarily have to know, um, like you don't have to want to evaluate a lazy sequence in order to be able to put them together. So if I um, do lazy cat on t two sequences, two different cookie collections, then I can uh, create a lazy sequence, a new lazy sequence of cookies. Um, but when I'm baking cookies, ideally old cookies should be eaten first. This is a doc stream. This is how you can um, uh, kind of, if you're doing closure and you want to tell someone what your function does, you can add a doc stream. Um, so when I'm baking cookies, I want to take, I want to take a certain number of random cookies, um, which are my new cookies, and I want to cat and concatenate them on the end of my. Uh, cookie jar because I want the, the fresh cookies to be eaten first. 
So if I bake three cookies, then it looks like this, but that's kind of boring because there wasn't any cookies to begin with in the cookie jar. So how can I t uh, check to make sure that the new cookies come last? Well, I can use an old cookie to wait. That looks like I implemented it wrong. That's probably because uh, the, oh, the old cookies should become first, that's why. Otherwise, you would switch the arguments here. But the old cookies come first because they're the ones that need to be eaten before you get the new fresh cookies. So what, what now? What happens now? Um, uh, I can define a set, which is some actors that I want to model. So this is this has all been talking about cookies, but now we're talking about people who want to interact with our cookie jar, who want to eat cookies. Um, there, if there's a random int, uh, um, function enclosure, which surprisingly enough generates random integers. How many? Okay, yeah. So with that, that, that's the range. Okay, so if I run, it'll generate some number between zero and random int. Um, and so for grandma, that's my first uh, actor in the system. Um, all these functions, I'm going to define them as functions which take a cookie jar. This is our lazy sequence that we've been working with. And then uh, return a new jar with uh, new cookies, whatever they're doing with it, and the cookies that you eat, that the grandma's eaten. Grandma is on a diet. She never eats cookies. But she does bake cookies and add them to the jar. So um, grandma will yeah, bake cookies and add them to the jar. If I add, um, I can evaluate grandma a couple times. And you can see she doesn't always bake cookies if she's mad at you. Um, and... Yeah, so, yeah. And this is adding to the the three cookies that I'm taking. But uh, yeah, she's just mm, baking away. Um, so this is uh, the monster. The monster is a, is a bit, um, he's a bit of a pig. So he um, is going to eat any, so num like between one and five cookies because he likes, um, likes cookies. And here you can see is also an, a new, um, this is another form of destructuring enclosure, also in the let block, um, but you could also put this in the function call. Anyway, this, with this the keys um, destructuring enclosure takes a, a map and then um, finds the value. So here the, sorry, the value would be, um, yeah, here, let me just do that. Take cookies, rand, int, five, and then some cookies, I think that's my jar. Um, so then, so this is what I'm talking about. This, this, this will return a map in the form of a, it's a map, but has two keys taken and left. And the keys um, destructuring binds then the uh, taken and left to the values of the keys of taken and left. Um, so the monster, what I want to do is I want him to take cookies um, and I want the new jar to be the ones that are left and the, uh, eaten, the ones he's eaten to be the ones he's taken. So if there's no, um, no cookies in the cookie jar, monster doesn't eat any. Um, if it's the cookie jar, I think that had 20 cookies in it. Sometimes he doesn't eat any if he's being polite, but most of the time he'll eat between one and five. And then you'll see the new jar that's returned um, with the cookies that are left and the ones that he ate. Uh, so if I do monster, so if I'm, this is basically grandma's cooking, um, then I'm calling the new jar function to get the, the value that she produced, uh, that that produced, and then I'm doing the monster on it. So uh, the monster was eating some cookies. The kitten is pretty much exactly the same, except the kitten will eat between zero and uh, is it two? Or I don't know, I don't remember. Check uh, rand int doc rand int. It's, yeah, okay. So n is exclusive, which means that rand int will take. Uh, so the kitten will take either zero or one cookies. So the kitten will, not surprisingly, not eat any cookies if there's no cookies in the cookie jar. And otherwise, we either eat zero or one cookie. 
So this is uh, the state of my system as a whole, uh, the state of the cookies, grandma, monster, and kitten. Um, uh, you can also have a state that actually has cookies in it. Um, so this is my, my state. And then I ha can generate some random actions. So here I'm, I'm generating uh, functions of the, the actions I've um, denoted by a tuple of the actor, grandma, and the function that is doing grandma. Um, and then I get a list of random actions that, that I can evaluate. So we want to do something with an action. How much time do I have? Almost over? OK. I'll just stop whenever it's time. So I'm, I'm, almost, I'm almost done. Uh, we want to do something with an action. Uh, we have the threading macro. So I was going to explain the threading macro. So if I associate something into a map, it replaces the value in the map and returns a new map. If I update a value in a map, then um, it updates the value in the map. So if I put the threading macros, I can put, take a map and then do several actions to it and then get a new map at the end. So do action is basically a function that I wrote. And this is doing destructuring within the function uh, definition. So this uh, is taking the tuple that I defined before and destructuring it so the actor is the first position and the action is in the second position, the action is the function. Uh, so I'm going to do, I'm going to call the action with the cookies of my state and get a jar where I have the new jar and the eaten functions. Um, and then I'm going to modify my state by associating the new jar with, sorry, is that, is that new jar? It should be, that's wrong. Yeah, I don't know, new jar. I don't, that's kind of maybe not a bit good name for uh, the key, but I was never good at naming. Um, so I'm going to associate the new jar with a new jar, and I'm going to update the actor in my system to concatenate the, the, the ones that he just ate, ate with the ones that he eaten before. So if I do action, can do action with grandma, um, and then add, so cookies are added to the cookie jar, but she doesn't eat anything, she doesn't eat. Um, and I can do the, the monster, so the monster didn't eat anything that time, but here he ate four, so the new jar has four less. I can do the same with the kitten. Um, the kitten didn't eat anything. Come on, kitten, eat something. Oh. There we go, kitten ate one. So then the new jar has one less because the kitten ate one. Um, so I can do some, there's some random actions. And I can also reduce. Um, so if I define a list of actions I want to do, I'll get some with more grammas in it so it looks like it actually is doing something. I can then map um, over the actions to see what what each one would do. And then you can expand and see the cookies that are going to be due. And I can also reduce um, over to see the, the end state. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to my lightning talk. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we don't have much time left, so I think um, please um, ask questions in the end if Joyce is um, there. Oh, maybe more. one or two questions uh, should be fine. Do you have one question? Where can I see what you just did? <laughs> okay, for in the in the channel for Scala user group, Düsseldorf. Yeah, that would be nice in the meetup, perhaps meetup chat or something like that. Uh, Scala. I'm, I'm in the Scala user group. I can, but I can. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good design. Thanks a lot. Another one? Okay. We also have a Twitter account, so you can follow it and see all the updates from the evening with, with some pictures, maybe some references to the slides. It's called Lambda Dus, I think. Yes. Lambda Dus, yeah, it test, is. Test.